Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to come back to an exoplanet that we've previously discussed on the channel and we're going to talk about a new discovery coming from this exoplanet that actually analyzed its atmosphere to the extent that we've never done before. In other words, the scientists were able to very thoroughly describe what's happening in the atmosphere of this exoplanet. The exoplanet we're talking about today is known as Gliese 3470b. It's actually been in the news a few times and the most recent time was when we talked about how this exoplanet has one of the highest, if not the highest, atmospheric evaporations compared to other planets we've discovered. In other words, the planet that you see right there is losing a lot of its atmosphere due to the proximity to the star. Which is not really surprising when you look at the distances involved here. That's the star here, GG3470, and the planet is really really close to it and here because of the proximity it actually gets really really toasty most likely over a thousand degrees celsius which of course makes the uh, actual atmosphere evaporate we also discovered that um, it's a very unusual planet in terms of the mass it's roughly around 12.6 masses of earth so it's somewhere between being an earth and being an object like neptune just to give a comparison, there is Earth uh, next to GGA3470b and there is Neptune. So in terms of size, it's somewhere in between them, uh, more closer to Neptune, but in terms of the actual composition and um, actual properties, it is relatively similar to uh, what you would call a super Earth. Basically, it does have an actual hard surface and an atmosphere that is most likely 5 to 20% of the total mass of the planet. So it's, in other words, nothing like we have here in the solar system. It's a rocky object with a really, really thick atmosphere. And that is why this planet is so unusual, because for the most part, it's unusual for the solar system, but it's quite common out there in the rest of the galaxy. We believe that these types of planets represent roughly around 80% of all exoplanets we discovered. Some of them are obviously different, but this here is pretty common in the galaxy. Now for the most recent paper, the scientists used two telescopes. They used Hubble and this beautiful telescope known as Spitzer is going to be retired um, in January of 2020, so only a few months from when I'm making this video. And the way that they analyzed all of this is actually very, very precise and very detailed. First of all, they looked at this um, object, at this planet, when it passes in front of its star, just so that they can actually see this region where the starlight kind of shoots through the atmosphere. And that way they could see what's in the atmosphere. But they also looked at when this object is on the other side of the star, so kind of right here, just to see what was reflecting from the surface. So that way, um, after about 20 or so observations, they were able to very accurately see and predict what's inside the atmosphere, how much of it is there, and most importantly, if it's similar to what we have on Earth. And the answer is no, it's actually very different from anything in the solar system. So first of all, they predicted that there will be some kind of um, heavier elements here, possibly things like methane, things like carbon, oxygen, and so on. Turns out there is nothing here of that sort. The atmosphere is made almost entirely out of hydrogen and helium. So in other words, it's very similar to an atmosphere of an object like Saturn. Also, it's very similar, almost identical to the atmosphere of the star itself. So in that sense, this object's atmosphere is almost identical to the composition of the parent star. And this is kind of unusual because we only have two objects in the solar system that have something similar, Saturn and Jupiter, and their origin is very different from the origin of this planet. They've also discovered that this planet has never experienced any migration and was created right here in this region of the star system. That is something we didn't expect and that is something that is very difficult to explain because it has a lot of hydrogen and helium. But at the same time, it's also losing this hydrogen and helium, so it's possible that in the beginning, this object was probably a very dry, very rocky object, kind of like this. And with time, as it orbited around the protoplanetary disk, it started accumulating all of this hydrogen and helium that was still here, and eventually turned into an object that was literally kind of like a miniature gas giant with a very thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium there. 
but it's also very likely that there was just not enough material for it to grow larger to turn into an object like Jupiter or Saturn. And so when uh, this object became a star and expelled all of the material from the star system, it literally resulted in this unusual blue planet with very thick atmosphere that suddenly started to evaporate because it was just a little bit too close to the star itself. The other really unusual property of this planet is that for the most part, we seem to have observed a very sharp drop in cloud opacity. In other words, the clouds that normally don't allow light to penetrate, and basically you can't really see the surface, in this object don't seem to act the same way. So for the most part, it's possible that we can actually see the ground itself relatively easily here, and the clouds don't seem to act in the same way as they do on Earth. They don't seem to block the light. And also, obviously, unlike Neptune and unlike Uranus that are relatively similar in mass, this object seems to have no methane, no ethane, and not even the presence of common elements such as, for example, carbon monoxide that usually is present on similar objects. And the scientists behind this paper believe that it's because they either disappeared with time, basically the uh, sunlight and the starlight and the temperatures made them kind of disappear eventually, or they were not really there to begin with. And so in that sense, this object is really, really strange. Definitely like nothing we have in the solar system. As you can see from this particular image, we do think that there is a very thick hydrogen and helium only atmosphere, and most likely some kind of a rock or possibly ice core. Ice means that it could be made out of methane and ethane, maybe that's where it's hiding. But it's, like I said, a very unusual object for our solar system, but seems to be a very common object out there in the galaxy. And so even though right now we have no idea what's going on there, just the fact that we were able to analyze its atmosphere so precisely and so directly really makes this a very unique study. As a matter of fact, this exoplanet is now officially one of the most well studied, with the scientists in the last few years being able to analyze its atmosphere extremely accurately. And considering this is at a distance of roughly around 100 light years away from us, this is something that's really impressive. It means that we can apply similar techniques to exoplanets that are closer to us, including the ones in TRAPPIST-1 system, just to find out what is really going on with their atmosphere as well. But anyway, if you'd like to learn more about this particular study and this particular research, check out the paper for this in the description below. For now though, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and wants to know more about the universe in general. Maybe even supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. But most importantly, come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.